So welcome everybody to another amazing Sure Solutions, the webinar edition. We have been hosting these this year and we are absolutely thrilled that we get to do another one, you know, as we're starting to wind down our year. My name is Mara Shore and I am one of the partners in Shore Solutions, your one of your all-time favorite practice management consulting companies focusing on the aesthetic and cosmetic space. And I am joined today, uh, I am proud to serve as the moderator today for these two fantastic gentlemen, one of which is my, uh, my amazing father and business partner, Jay. And Jay is not only the founder of Shore Solutions, but like I said, we are amazing partners. And there you go, there's always have to be on brand. The other um, an absolutely amazing gentleman that I am so grateful to have with us today is Dr. Mark Tager. And we have known, we were talking about this before, Dr. Tager, I think we all met in 2008. So we've watched our family shift and change and do all sorts of great things. And Dr. Tager um, is in such a great role and we are excited at the conversations that he and Jay are going to have. So I encourage you to sit back and enjoy. Feel free to have a snack, whether it's 3 p.m. or noon your way. You will see me go off the screen in just a moment and then you will see the gentleman take my place. If you have any questions at all for me as moderator, if you want to know if something is a little glitchy, if you have questions for them throughout, we want to make this interactive. That's one of the benefits of this. So put them in the chat box. So if you see that towards the bottom of your screen, um, if you aren't already a complete Zoom pro, at the bottom of your screen, there is a chat icon. So click that and then that will pop up. So I encourage you to use it. And with that, my little block is going to go away. And I leave it to you, Jay and Dr. Mark Tabor. Bye. See you at the Thank end. You. Thank you, Mara. And welcome, Dr. Tager. Uh, I'd like to do a little bit of housekeeping rules and a couple of disclaimers. Uh, I will do my initial and formal introduction of myself, and then I will allow Dr. Mark Tager to introduce himself. Um, I always find that when you have moderators, uh, doing bios of people. They do it off of a red script. Sometimes um, they'll know it, sometimes they won't. And it's always better for, I think, believe for the person to actually introduce themselves briefly. So my name is Jay Shore. I am one of the partners. Uh, you saw the other partner as our uh, moderator that opened up. I am one of the partners of Sure Solutions. We are a national practice management consulting firm specializing in the operational, administrative, and financial health, aesthetic, cosmetic, surgical practices. The initial disclaimer I do want to make uh, is I am not a physician. Uh, I, the reason I give that disclaimer is many times I may use physician or medical lingo. I have been referred to so many times as Dr. Shore uh, at conferences and things like that. And I really wanted people to understand that I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express, but I did not graduate medical school. I didn't go to medical school, not that I didn't graduate. So I appreciate the accolades, although that's the disclaimer I want to give. Um, the other introduction before I turn it over to Dr. Tager to introduce himself is I want to tell you how I got to this place. And I know I put Dr. Tager on the spot many times when I do this intro, but I am a former owner of one of the, at the time, largest dermatology, facial body plastic surgery practices here in South Florida. At that time, um, this is before the aesthetic show actually uh, had really ramped up to what it was. They were looking to build a certified aesthetic consultant program, the Honor CAC program, which many of you have seen me. Um, I have helped to assisting in the producing, the production of the video copy. Um, I've been the moderator since almost its, since its second year. Um, at that time, they were looking to build the business side of the Certified Aesthetic Consultant Program, and Dr. Tager had a colleague, Dr. Bo Bates, and he said, do you know anybody that could help us in developing the business section of this? This is back in 2008, 2009. 
And Dr. Bates had said to Dr. Tager, I know this guy that I work with uh, in South Florida, Jay Shore, you might want to give him a call. I received a call from Dr. Tager and says, I'm going to be in town. This is, he's from California. I'm going to be in town in a couple of days. I would like to meet with you to see if you'd have an interest. I said, I have nothing to lose. Dr. Tager flew into South Florida. I met with him in my office. He left my office. I don't think it was three hours later, I received a call with an invitation to be on the faculty and to be part of writing the business section of the Certified Aesthetic Consultant Program. The Aesthetic Show was my first faculty uh, appointment back in 2009, and it arithmetically progressed from one, two, four, eight, 16, and the rest is history. Uh, in 2012, um, at the untimely demise of the medical director of our medical practice, who was my late wife, um, we sold the medical practice and my lovely daughter and I went into practice management consultant and the rest is history as to where we are today. And we have been friends with Dr. Tager and professional colleagues ever since. That is how I got into this industry. I. I owe so much to you, Dr. Tager, for giving me the opportunity. Um, I don't know if I would have gotten into the conference circuit that way or through another channel, but you sure helped to accelerate it for me to where my daughter and I are today, Assure Solutions. So I owe that personal gratitude and thanks to you. And I'd like to turn it over to you to introduce yourself before sure. we get started. Uh, well, Jay went through a disclaimer that he's not an MD. I am an MD, AD, HD. So you might think that I have a short attention span, but really I've done a lot of things in my career. And uh, one of them was just to initiate the uh, CAC program and then hand it off to someone who is more competent than I in, in doing the business part of things, and that was Jay. So I certainly admire the work that, that he's done. So the work that I've done, and I've done many things, I've uh, directed health promotion for Kaiser Permanente. I've been a, uh, I helped start the Fraxel Laser Company. I was the chief marketing officer, the founding marketing officer, chief CMO at Cineron, Neutronics. I've always had this, uh, this belief that we need to have an integration of functional medicine, beauty and health from the inside out, and health and beauty from the outside in. So my work, over you know almost 40 years now has been about half of it in this integrative functional world and half of it in aesthetics. And I increasingly see this coming together. Now, my last book, my 10th book was called Cash Pay Healthcare, How to Start, Grow and Perfect Your Business. And the premise there is that is a very simple one and it's, it's one sentence. And if you remember nothing else from this session today, here is the one sentence to hold on to. The best way to grow your practice is to enhance your presence. And it is presence that has you standing out from everyone else. So if you think about it, you know, there's so many practitioners doing aesthetics. How do you stand out? How, how do you rise above the noise? And I would say to you that your presence in your practice is what distinguishes your practice from the others around you. So I would just have you hold on to that. And then hopefully we can have this be the, the centerpiece for today's conversation. Uh, and when we talk about this, there is a corollary because if the best way to build your practice is to enhance your presence, the corollary is this. And in today's visual digital world, the best way to do that is with video. Perfect. That's a great <laughs> intro. You know, so as I always love to hear together as ever as one, let's get after it. All okay. right. So my first question to you is how did you get into this? What made you feel that as a physician, why did what made you decide to venture into a non-medical role as a professional coach? Yeah. Because when I look at and I think about Dr. Tager, I think of you as a coach. 
you know, I know that you're a doctor, but I really look at the role that you play in our industry as a coach to help other professionals in the presence. And I'm going to give a shout out to another colleague, coach of mine as well. And we all know the smile doctor, Dr. Sure. Rich Castellano. He's a facial plastic surgeon in Tampa, Florida, and he has this PPMD, um, this professional, and he's a coach to those, and he's the smile doctor. It's about his presence, and I've been on his faculty, and I've listened to him, and you know, sometimes people say, ah, it's a little quirky. It's not quirky. It's for real. It's yeah. the presence. So, yeah. you know, I, I always say, Dr. Castellano, thank you for being an inspiring person in our community. Uh, for the power of the spot, the smile, and the physicality of it. So, Dr. Sure. Taker, how did you get into this? Well, uh, I, I guess my it goes way back to when I was director of health promotion for Kaiser Permanente. I had my job was to take all the best talent from Kaiser Permanente and train them to deliver entertaining, engaging, impactful presentations to our corporate clients. This is the very, very beginning of corporate wellness in 1980. So I had to go through the ranks of all of our people and select people who had the potential, the power, the energy, the enthusiasm to deliver education and training. And then I took all of them and we trained them to not just in the content, but in the process. So from that, I realized early on, I, I and mean, I did practice for quite a number of years. I had the first integrative holistic practice in Portland, Oregon in the, in the late seventies and early eighties. I uh, worked with a lot of the, the Portland trailblazers would come see me as their wellness doctor. Uh, folks like uh, Maurice Lucas, Bill Walton, Bobby Gross, Lyle Hollins. So, but the point there is that I realized early that my skill set was best one to many than one to one. Now, as I worked and gave, uh, oh, I can't even count the number of presentations I've given. I've got 10 books. So every time you write a book, you get out and talk about it. But the point is that that's me going out. But the other piece of this work is watching, looking, being very, very observational. So as I worked with uh, and, and I attended sessions, I would go to my colleagues at Sutter Airlines and say, you know, John, I love the energy in this presentation, but you really needed to hook the audiences a, a little bit faster. I really liked the way you did this, but you needed a break in time to summarize all of this great information that you gave before you went on to the next key point. So, what it would happen is I would sort of become the, uh, the, the uh, speaker whisperer. So speakers would say, Mark, what do you think about my presentation? I mean, what, what could I do better? So more and more the top speakers in the industry would say, well, Mark, would you, can I work with you? What can I do to improve? So we actually, along with my colleague, Robert John Hughes, we, we started doing, in addition to the A, uh, A4M sessions and other programs, we would take 25, 30 docs for our practitioners in, in healthcare and lock them in a room for, in a nice room, a big room for a weekend. And we would work with them on their presence skills. We had a curriculum and, and, and the great joy for me in this last, <laughs> last cut of my career is to see the incredible personal transformation that takes place when people become irresistibly powerful healthcare communicators. They tap into their authenticity. They know how to read the audience. They, had a, they create messages that resonate. And this power actually spills over to other areas of their lives. So we will see people, you know, really become strong, powerful, impactful, and happier and healthier in their lives. So that's, that's been my journey. It keeps going. And, and I learn as much from every, every person that we coach or we train uh, as much as they learn from me. Yeah, isn't it very interesting? Um, you know, there's always a, a very interesting line that I've heard many, many years ago and I carry it through to my life is 
you know, people say to me, well, I only have a short period of time. All right. So how do you get so much information into a 10 minute presentation? Sometimes you're given eight minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever. And I have found that you are never an interruption of somebody's time when you have something interesting to say, right? So how is it that you coach people, for example, because how many presentations have we been to where it's such great information, but the presentation is dreadful? Yes. You know, you have people read the slides to you and it's just, well, just send the presentation to me because I can't <laughs> I can read, read myself. Yeah. I, I'm, all, I'm glad you only have a 10 minute presentation because I don't know that I could sit through this for an hour, right? So what is your message in giving it to somebody when you're coaching them with the presentation? What is the message? Because we watch people whose hands are all over the place. I mean, they're doing a Bernie. This is the Bernie, right? right. This is the Bernie. Right. And what are the top mistakes that, physicians make when failing to perfect their oral and their communication presence. Because there are so many people, like you mentioned Bernie, you know, and, or sometimes, and I don't want to get political, but whether it's Elizabeth Warren or whether it's Nancy was another one, he's Lindsey Graham or, 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 you know, any of the Mitch McConnell, they have great things to say, but maybe they just don't get it out there properly. What, what is it? Yeah, let's look, at, let's look at what makes an effective presentation by a healthcare professional and some of the top mistakes. The first one is the curse of knowledge. The curse of knowledge means you know so much more about your subject than anyone else, and you're gonna show them how smart you are. And you're gonna have these slides these, with complicated diagrams fly by and you don't care whether they see them with it but but you just look how smart i am look at this why are you doing me dirty like this <laughs> so that's the first one so the the first principle is the kiss principle keep it simple i mean if we can go to the studies but if you show 24 slides in two two weeks from today people might remember three um points on the slides uh, after that, they don't even remember your name. Oh yeah, that the, the guy with no hair, you know, the guy from, uh, was he from Miami? That was, you know, he's from Miami for uh, Florida or California. One right. of us, you know, one of us. So the first one is to keep it simple. Uh, this, another principle, I'll just give you some principles here. You got to hook the audience in the first few minutes. Uh, in the first, just grab their attention, be provocative. Uh, a case in point, let me give you a case in point. Uh, we were coaching a, a, a woman who was going to give a presentation, a marketing presentation to naturopath. Here's what her opening line was going to be. Well, I've always wondered, is it a naturopath or naturopath? Raise your hand. Yeah. So we coached her to, to get a real presentation where she walked out with a paper bag, put it down, didn't say a word. Reached into the paper bag, took out a stethoscope. Remember when, they, when you got your first stethoscope? Put it around her neck. Reached in, there's a white coat. Remember how proud you felt, how ready you were when you got your first white coat? Everybody got that, yeah. Reached in, pulled out a big binder that said marketing plan. Say, remember how ready you were when you got the marketing plan, how to grow your business? And everyone's gone. What? What do you? Oh, you didn't get the marketing plan on how to grow a business. So this is an example of how you hook that audience in the first little period of time. In longer presentations, you want to break it up into fifteen-minute chunks. You want to keep things moving along. You want to be organized. So I think of the presentation as a sandwich, I, and I concentrate on the bread, the open. I spend most of my time working on a creative open for a presentation and the close, that's the bread. The middle will be piece of the avocado, the tomatoes, the beans, uh, yeah, maybe, a little, maybe a little piece of chicken in there. But that, when we get to that, most people know that stuff. You know the three things you're gonna tell people. You know, that's, 
So the open and the close. Now, another piece that's really, really important, Jay, is presentation anxiety. Um, there, there's a myth. There's a myth that when you get up on the stage, you're supposed to be the hero. You're not the hero. The hero is the audience. You are there to deliver a message of possibility for them. A message, you are there to light up possibilities in their minds, and their hearts, to impart some information. What they do with that information, that's their business. They are the hero. And you, and you actually have to go through a process of a learned process, by the way, of appearing happy, appearing confident, getting your gestures in sync with your words. So you, if you really care about something, you care about something. If you wanna show that your practice went from here to here, or in the old days, we did it this way, today we do it this way. You sync up some of your gestures to get that power. You use the power of your voice. And what's very, very important, one more little fun story. I was coaching a, a couple of uh, women who are practice managers and on, uh, on video. Uh, both of them had a lot of Botox and a lot of filler. And it was really hard to get them to, to be, look happy on camera because <laughs> nothing moved. I mean, nothing moved around their eyes. You see, those are little smile lines. I'm happy. You know, there's some, you can't see where the lighting, but there's some, you know, movement there. So you have to learn to smile with your voice. With your voice, you exude happiness. So the power of the voice, particularly on video, the voice is so important because we, we've lost the sense of touch, we've lost the sense of smell, we've lost the vibration that emanates from the heart that can be picked up with sophisticated electromagnetometers, three feet from the body. We've lost the coherence, the heart coherence. So you've got what? You've got your smile, your enthusiasm, and so much of this is transmitted in your voice. You know, one of the things um, I think most presenters make, it's also the same thing that I say for websites. When you're presenting, I, I always want it to be three you to one me, oh, yeah. Yeah. all right? So that the audience that I'm trying to reach, and I believe it was you um, that I, I was listening to a presentation at a conference and it's, I'm so glad to be here, but more importantly, ah. I'm so glad that- No, you got my mantra. And this is, uh, you, this is the mantra that I've been teaching since 1984. 1984, I did a book with Margie Blanchard, uh, whose husband Ken is a one minute manager. It's called Working Well. It was the, we were the first ones to coin the term bad boss. And uh, so I'm now invited to the YPO, which is a big deal. You know, the young president's organization with all the top CEOs. And I'm giving a talk on, I think it was stress and resilience or something like that. And I had like five employees at the time. And I was like shaking. And Ken Blanchard calls me and says, Mark, you, you look a little nervous. I said, well, how do you know, Ken? He said, well, you got a red rash going <laughs> on your neck and you're sweating and you're, you're quivering. So he actually gave me this mantra that was, uh, that I've used for probably the next thousand presentations. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad you're here. I know what I know. I care about you. I'm glad I'm here. You always want to project happiness and gratitude, always. So the first things on camera that I do with my, I, it, with, with coaching is lock it in. Now, what do I mean by that? When I say lock it in, you lock in your smile and you lock in your posture. Those are the two things that you lock in. So you, you nail that. And, and then, so I'm glad I'm here. And you project that sense of happiness all the time. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Without you as an audience, there's no need for me. What, uh, one of the things that you know, I would like is how does a physician even know when their ability to communicate is subpar? Because all too many times, when whether it's a physician or another presenter, 
nobody really knows if their presentation is subpar. So what they do is they go on and on with, as Dr. Tager explained, with this 20, 30 page presentation. And it's so technical in nature at times that they may not even know that the presentation itself is subpar. You know, we continue to to find again and again, you know, the question again about how can a physician perfect their presence with the time constraints that are actually placed upon them, right? So we're gonna we're gonna skip around. I know we had some questions we were gonna discuss, but you know, Jay, we look at clients of ours, right, that are speakers as well. And I always love when we have clients that may not have been speakers in the very beginning, but they've worked with us and we help we make suggestions about how they can become speakers. They come to us for advice. So um, I know, you know, we've had we have so many clients that have done this that are now on the speaking circuit. So part of the fun is that when we go to conferences in person, which cross some fingers for 2021, that we get to see our clients up on stage as well and cheer them on. So Jay, can you talk a little bit about the doctors out there that want to enhance their presence and how can they get started? Where should they look if they want to get started speaking? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. And it's time constraints. Now, how do you perfect your presence with time constraints that you're given? Mm -hmm. You know, how many times, Mar, we see, and sometimes at different conferences, you're given any 10 minutes. And I was explaining this with Dr. Tager, 10 minutes, yeah. 12 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, it, forget it. And you may have somebody that has five slides, 20 slides, 30 slides, and they'll go very, very slowly. And the clock is counting down. And they're not even halfway or three quarters of the way through the presentation and you realize, or they realize, cause look, it's no secret to us as personal presenters, many times there might be a teleprompter in front of us facing the audience, or if there's not, there might be a timer on the floor right. that we, or a timer on the podium. Mm -hmm. And we see it's a countdown timer, how much time we have left. And you will see somebody rush through the final two or three slides. Yes. If you're as fortunate as I am to have a Mara in your audience sitting in the front <laughs> row going five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. But one of the things that we think absolutely keep in mind is that you need to look at if there's a 10 minute presentation, you know, going into it, it's a 10 minute presentation. You know, it's a 30 minute presentation or a 20 minute presentation make sure you run through your slide deck with a member of your team so that you know what the timing and the pacing needs to be like, because there's really not an excuse. You're not surprised when you get up there and you have 10 minutes, you knew going into it, you had 10 minutes. You know, I, what be, before I came a professional speaker on the circuit, mm -hmm. uh, when I was in corporate America, um, they actually sent me to a linguist schooling. Mm -hmm. to try to minimize my Northeastern Philadelphian brogue accent, if you will, all right, to more neutralize that. And they filmed us doing presentations. And then we graded one another. Well, you know, today, with the power of GoToMeeting and Zoom, or whatever, you have the ability, or Skype or whatever, you actually oh. have the ability to not only create your presentation and record it and then play it over, or if you have another team member that can do it so it doesn't make you look like you're reaching over there, you're going over there to change the slide, all right? Now also, whether you do it in Canva and you convert it to PowerPoint, even PowerPoint has a timer that you can actually record your presentation and look to see how long. There's nothing worse because each slide really should be equally as important as every other slide. Correct. Right. And, and I encourage, this is where, you know, as we continue talking about time constraints, Jay, you brought up a great point, which is we have, even we have a team that helps us. And so 
a way that as a busy doctor, if you are asked to speak somewhere, not only do you want to keep those time constraints in mind when it comes to your consults, because this is an excellent place to talk about, you have your talking points, et cetera, for neurotoxins, et cetera. Um, I think Dr. Tager is, uh, is coming back with us. I'm back. <laughs> Dr. Tigger, I'm just wrapping up my thought and then I'm giving, I'm going to go away again. So okay. I think we're just talking a little bit about, you know, having a member of your team that's able to help you if it's a recorded presentation, they're able to help you edit both pre and post. So that doesn't need to be something that's on the doctor. And I encourage you, the creation of a slide deck sometimes is what takes a long time. It's not knowing your, um, you know, what you want to put in each slide. But if you have a team member and you should have a team member that you trust on your team, that you can simply send them an email and say, in these 10 slides, this is the one or two lines I want on slide one, the one or two lines I want on slide two. I want a before and after photo of a rhinoplasty, if you're giving a talk about rhinoplasty, for instance, I want a before and after, or I want a graphic, I want a full quote, et cetera. Let your team member who loves doing it, <laughs> right? That loves the graphic. They love the marketing. They're good at it. Let them be the one that creates the presentation for you in Canva and PowerPoint. And then you can proofread it at the end and make sure that it's exactly, and you'll get into a great system with your team. Let me pose to Dr. Tager the same question that we were on, um, that how should a physician or a presenter, Dr. Tager, start to perfect their presence with time constraints that are placed upon them. Because what Mara and I were speaking about is something that you brought up earlier. You may have somebody that's got a 20 or a 30 slide presentation, the, the, the hateful 20, 30 slides and you have 10 or 15 minutes to do it in, mm -hmm. all right? What is the best advice that you can give to somebody in how to perfect the presence with time constraints they have yeah. placed upon them? Uh, you know, I think th there's this gift called feedback and it's, it's what we all need. And it's the gift that helps us grow. So that's essentially what we do. We have small group coaching sessions. We take uh, six, sometimes eight uh, practitioners. We take them through a four week in intensive in which they actually have, they've got homework uh, they watch some videos, they fill out some forms, they do little video stuff and they come and share it with the group and they get feedback. Uh, and, and that's essentially what we all need. Uh, I can tell you, I mean, I've been on camera so many times, for example, now everything's moved to video. So we have to talk about video presentations. Uh, I've never given myself a hundred percent on any presentation I've ever given. I always see little things that I could do, things I can get better. So wherever you are today, you can be better tomorrow, but you do need some training and coaching. You need to see yourself on camera. You need to work through your quirks, the ums, the ahs, the visual quirks. Now, I give an example. That example I was talking about with the practice managers, they had this habit anytime they wanted on video to emphasize a point they lean into the camera like this. Uh, you know, that would be a normal thing you do when you're, 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 you're in live with someone. You lean in a little bit to sort of show that you're listening. When you do that in video, it's kind of creepy, you know, especially when you take your hands and go forward. So I, I just think people need some, some coaching. They don't, most people in, we found that in four sessions, people make dramatic improvement. We also teach people to read from a teleprompter. Which and it, we can do that in in one, in one of the sessions we do it, so that you're just sitting here. I, when I I do so much video work as do you, I just have the words scroll, and I never worry about what I'm going to say next. Do you, Dr. Have... Tager, and as we talk about the the virtual video world, do you have a teleprompter app or program? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, uh, sure. Which uh, would you care to share what yeah, that is? Yeah, with everybody? Oh, yeah. I, I use a, a program called Prompt Smart, P R O M T Smart. So what it does is it allows me to scroll the words with my voice. So I just sit and I just perform. So what I've done is I've written some scripts. Now, when you write a script, you write your script for the ear 
not the I. I mean, I think that's really important. These are scripts, for example, and and uh, let me just pull one of them up here and I'll just show you. So here's the script right here. And I'm just going to, uh, I'm just gonna go and edit this. I'm gonna play this. So what happens is this script will scroll my voice. And I'm looking right now at my camera and, and I, can just, I can just start speaking. Uh, and it will, it will go with my voice. You've got a great personalized nutrition assessment technology for healthcare practitioners to use with their patients. So what's the best way to get it out there? I've got two answers to this question. The first is for them to experience the product personally. The second option is for them to get up close and personal with it. So see how easy that is? So you can see my screen, the words move as I speak, and I don't have to worry about what to say. I just have to now perform the script. So I, I really recommend that for folks. And it's a great way to practice also. So Jay, do you want to go with the next question? I'm going to hop off for the, okay, bye, Mara. Yeah. For the next 10 minutes. I'm here, but I'm just going to be in the background. With that, I'm, I happened on the other side um, to be fortunate because having a conference producer on my team or having Mara on my team, sure. I can just speak. I may have the presentation uh, up on the same screen, like right now as I'm looking at you, and I have the slides of what the slides are, what they're going to be, and I'll just talk to them. And the person who is my moderator or producer on the other side right now, like Mara, will be able to actually move the slides. Yes. So if I'm going to say, like now, for example, outside of financial gain, you know, which can also be derived from your surgical skills, how can you tell that your skills and your speaking ability is being well received? Now, that is something that if you have somebody on the other side, for example, like right now, I didn't have to do anything. Yeah, I know what the slides are going to be. It's that my moderator or producer on the other side was able to do that. Now, you can also do editing or having the prompting like yourself. So how do you know that it's being well received? Because there inevitably is there's always somebody on the front row that I look at and is sleeping. And I don't know whether or not it was me or they had a rough night. No, you're in Vegas. You do too many sessions in Vegas and they're all hung over, Jay. Come on. <laughs> uh, nobody's sleeping. Other than that, your presentations are so engaging. Uh, here's this thing. In a live presentation, you know when your words, when your phrases, when your stories, when your jokes, when your key points are resonating. You know it. You see, you, you watch for the light ups in the audience. Mm, yeah, you see when you hit home. That's the beauty of the live presentation. You can modify, you can change things on the fly. You can see if you take a certain tack and it's not working, you can shift it. That's not the problem. The problem is when you're doing this presentation, you to the camera and you get no feedback. Now, the beauty is we're having a conversation. So, you know, I'm getting feedback. My dog, Sienna, she's giving me feedback. She just got up, moved to the other side of the couch. Uh, she said, move it along, dad. So, but in video, you just don't get the feedback. So it is a lot harder. I mean, all of us who are doing presentations just get sort of burned out because we just talk to the camera. We send in our presentation and we have no idea how it resonates. Now it's still, it's wonderful to have a producer, but, and you can do this because you've got the gift of gab. You have given your presentations, you know your stuff, you have tested your stories, your jokes, your tales and to, <laughs> to countless audiences. You know what works, you know what doesn't work. That's what I work on most, what doesn't work, <laughs> doesn't what didn't work. get the laugh and I That's thought the, that was funny. Right, it's, it's the only feedback that is meaningful that you get when people say, instead of saying, oh, Dr. Tager, you know, Jay, your presentation was so great. And they go out and say, you know, you said this one thing and it really upset me. That's when you listen. But we don't have that luxury on video. So in video, you just got to practice and you've got to get some feedback and you've got to learn to be concise. That's the other thing that's so important about video. You got to take that message and 
edit it back, pare it back, keep it tight. And, and that's why I like scripting. Because if you script something, even if you don't read it, if you just go ahead and write things out, you'll look at a script or the written word and say, wow, I'm grammatically, I'm off there. That shouldn't be is, that should be are. That's plural, not singular. Or I've used this same word eight times in four sentences. I, I really got to find a substitute word. So, uh, you know, I've written 10 books and this is interesting. This is a book I wrote 18 years ago, the beginning of SARS. This was uh, a time when we we're laying people off, leadership in times of stress and change. Now, why do I show you that? I could give that talk as well today as I could 18 years ago, because by writing it out, I've memorialized it. I've got the structure. I know where things go. I've got A to Z. So I do, you know, a lot of, we help some practitioners write books. And I, you're not going to get famous. You're not going to get rich with a book. But what it will do is allow you to clarify your thinking and the flow of your ideas. And that's why it's so important. Now, when we get back to normal, and we will, Sure. And I don't want to call it the new normal because they called it the new normal after 9-11. And you know what? It became the normal, you know, having to take your shoes off, having to open up your laptop bags, not being able to walk somebody to the gate. That was the new normal. But then several years later, it becomes, well, what do you mean? That's just the way it is. So there will be different things. Now, when we get back to the way it used to be, modified in sorts, it's not just the power of presence and presentation at a conference because social media has allowed us between Instagram live and all of the other Facebook live and things like that. For those who have operating rooms and they wanna show people live broadcasts in their exam rooms, what additional personnel are required? Even if you're just like a one man slash woman show Sure. You know, Jay, good lighting, good lighting, good lighting, and good lighting. So you can probably see the ring light reflection in my eyes, those, that little, that little uh, bright white light. I see that a lot when I watch news TV. broadcasts. Yeah. Uh, every, every, everybody's got the ring light. There's a reason you why I don't wear glasses when I video. Yeah, because it's uh, exactly right. Now, and then, you know, all you really need is an iPhone. And we try to instruct people to hold the phone horizontally as much as possible. Now, if it's just Instagram, you're gonna go vertically. But if you wanna have a, a piece that you can use with Facebook or you wanna edit, all you really need is, is a, an iPhone. A tablet's great because you can do the formatting. Um, now, when you wanna be have that shallow depth of field, the 60 minutes where the background blurs, you need a DSLR for that. Right now on the cameras, we can do this with, with photographs. We can blur the backgrounds and have the shallow depth of field, but we can't do it in video yet, yet. So I, I think that you don't need, now the other thing you wanna do is have a tripod because it's hard to hold a camera steady sometimes. So I will bring this in sure. just so I can show. And even if you want to have a little one man studio. That's all you need right there. This is my ring light on a tripod. And yep. this is my gooseneck here. Sure. That is for my iPad vertically, horizontally. And then if not, then I can do this here for an iPhone vertically, yep. horizontally. And in my little bag of tricks, I have a little uh, Bluetooth sync that I can control the iPhone or the iPad through Bluetooth. Sure. And you'd never know. I mean, this is like my little one man studio that you know we keep over in the corner. Yeah. And you know, you, whether or not you wanna use this as a green screen and be careful with green screens because sometimes it might look like I don't have any ears. I, I don't like the green, look, a green screen needs to be incredibly well lit it uh, to do a green screen to do a real green screen you need good lighting and what happens you're right you lose the ears you lose an arm i get 
uh, get a green little halo. Uh, I just, now you, you also have a question of, of what kind of background you want. Now, you know, sometimes you, you'll want the plain wall in back of you. Other times, you know, I think people like to see sort of where you live and where you work. And, you know, I've got my dog and I, you know, I like Oriental rugs and I, I you know, my, my childhood armoire you'll see in the background. So that's just how much of my, your persona you want to open up and allow people to see. But that's you. okay today. So today. It wasn't okay. It before. wasn't, that's exactly And right. I think it will always be okay going I forward so. because tell like, like telemed, in the last question I have for you, it's how much additional coaching, Dr. Tager, is really needed once you feel that you perfect? Because you know what? Even I, um, it's very difficult because when I was going to prepare my presentation for uh, a, a, um, a conference that is since passed, uh, I watched a video of you in how to give presentation skills and it you you went on how to use your camera and the lighting and things like that and here is one professional speaker to another uh, I would not respond to all I sent you an email and I said hey that was I nice say, I don't know if you know this but in the last second you didn't freeze the camera to go this was your end yeah and, and I and I can't remember why I did that what happened there, uh, some something happened, but normally we teach people to quote unquote, stick the ending, yeah. stick the landing. So, yeah, so everybody can always get better. Now, the, the, we found that if we take people in four sessions over you know, a four week period of time and they're committed and they do their homework, we can take them from good to really, really good or fair to good to very good. So because there's always things that we can do now for for Taz, for example, I teamed up with Leslie Marcus and she's doing more of the media training and we've got to get people to a point. She said, look, when if you send me your tape, 99 tapes out of 100, they're not good enough. So they're not good enough to even be considered for a, a media placement on either a national or a large regional talk. So we've got to get our healthcare practitioners from from here to there and, and that that's the kind of coaching that we do so once you learn it you learn it doesn't mean you won't make that same mistake again i mean i will i will sometimes lapse into long island talk you know you know you know i will lose energy in my voice over time and uh, I will change the pitch of my voice so it's maybe not as understandable. So you will lapse into some of these little, these little things. But for the most part, you will come across as authentic, credible, caring, engaging. And that's, that's what you want to do. Now, the worst customers that we have, the worst clients, are the uh, plastic surgeons and dermatologists who... They look at themselves, they see that right there. My DOA, uh, you see how this is just, I'm down a little bit on the right side there. Uh, wait, wait, I gotta get some more Botox in there and I gotta get this all lifted. So it's not about how beautiful you look. It's about the message that you take to others to create beauty in them. Your message is for them to light up the possibilities for the consumer. Yeah, if it was about beauty, I would never be broadcast. You and I, you and I would never get absolutely. I would leave it all tomorrow. You know? yeah, well, we'd be we do radio, Jane. <laughs> and with that, I'm back. <laughs> With that, um, I am going to do a screen share just because there's a couple important things that I want to make sure, uh, sure we share. And I have my second screen, so I want to make sure we don't miss anything. We know that at the end of our webinar, and you guys, you both, you men, did such an incredible job. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. We hear again and again that people say, I would like, you know, where can I find more things like this? So I would direct you to a couple different places. Number one, Shore Solutions, the podcast. And uh, that way you will hear Jay and I talking about 
looking ahead to 2021, and you will also hear us talking about employee theft. So if you are craving more education from Jay, this is a great place to find it now. We also have video pages on our website. For a very limited time, uh, we invite you all to contact us and the information is on the very bottom of our screen, info at shoresolutions.com. And we would love to offer you one of these three free tools. So either a, our marketing calendar, a free credit card processing analysis, or a free patient financing program registration, just as a thank you for joining us on today's webinar. So again, this information right here, uh, info at shoresolutions.com. And I encourage you to also follow us on the socials. And finally, I always love to, as Jay would say, give a shout out to Dr. Mark Tager. And Dr. Tager, do you want to explain to our audience? Yeah, you know, the other thing, uh, we also have this great digital book that we give out uh, on how to use video to grow your presence in your practice. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get that at drtager, my name, drtager.online. So if they want that, they can grab that drtager.online. So uh, that's that's available as well. So and there, there may be another book where you can find one of the members that are on this webinar as well as a quoted source. You, I know you interviewed Jay in another one of your books as well. Yeah, every so about every third book I interview Jay because uh, <laughs> Jay sops up information and knowledge like a sponge, and then I just say, Jay, what do you know? So I've got Jay in, uh, I think uh, at least one one or two of my books. This book. <laughs> I believe Jay's in this guy here, which is Cash Pay Healthcare, which is uh, uh, sort of like the big Bible. It's a big fat book on everything you need to know on uh, perfecting the model of your business and things like that. And uh, yes. Jay is in there. And yes, great. and so we've, we've known Dr. Tager, like we said, a long time. So we were so incredibly grateful that we were able to all speak together. So that awesome. is how you can find Dr. Tager. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that joined us today or if you're watching this webinar later. Again, thank you to Jay. Thank you to Dr. Tager. We loved having you. And if anybody has any questions afterwards, you are more than welcome to contact us or contact Dr. Tager. Thank Jay. you. Take care. So See you guys.